On today's show, how new Houston Rockets head coach Ime Udoka is the anti Steven Silas. He recently sat down for a couple Q and A's and giving some insight into his plans for the team next season, different defensive schemes he plans to utilize. Alperin Shangun as a passing hub offensively, helping Kevin Porter Jr. get more off-ball reps and utilizing him as a shooter. It's like a Rockets fan's dream just absolutely come true. Also, the first addition being made to Ime Odoka's coaching staff. All of that and more coming up right here at Locked on Rockets. This is Mission Control, Houston. Ignition sequence start. The Houston Rockets select Jalen Green, Alperin Shangun, and Jabari Smith Jr., T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. Every time I step on that floor, I'm coming. Hey, Houston fans, I am so happy. You're getting somebody who's going to come in with a chip on their shoulder, somebody who's going to come come in and compete from day one. Six, five, four, three, two, one. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian and credentialed media member. I'm also the host of Locked on NBA Mondays. Be sure to follow along on Twitter at JT Gatlin and the show, of course, at Locked on Rockets, free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts, including YouTube. Just go to YouTube, search Locked on Rockets, be sure to like, comment, and and subscribe. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash LockedOnNBA. When you enter promo code LockedOnNBA, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti-style tumbler. The tumbler is super nice with every single order. As always, thank you so much for making Locked on Rockets part of your day every single day, whether it's on the way to work, on your lunch break, in the gym. Thank you for making LOR part of your day every single day. Joining us now is your weekly co-host, draft enthusiast, Madison Moore. You can track down on Twitter at Madman Leaks. Here to discuss not one, but two incredible Q&A articles dropped by Rockets beat writers, Jonathan Fagan of the Houston Chronicle and Kelly Eco of The Athletic that came out Thursday, one Thursday morning, one Thursday afternoon. Uh, th- these were, it was like watching a like battle of titans between the two Rockets beat writers who had these Q&A articles drop with Rockets head coach Ime Udoka as all of these guys were in Chicago for the NBA draft lottery. They were both able to have these sit-down discussions with the new Houston Rockets head coach. And man, man, oh man, Madison, were these articles jam-packed with some juicy insight and details about what we can expect from Ime Udoka. Yeah, man, I I mean... I thought they were great. I thought they both uh, gave insights on different aspects of uh, Emma Yudoka's uh, perspective on different things within the team. And I think it's a lot of tea leaves for us, uh, you know, me and you to actually go off of and read into the next level. So, yeah, man, where do you want to start with these things? Okay, so what I think what, what we should both do here is there was a, there was a lot of info to unpack, and we are not going to get to all of it, and, and we wouldn't want to get to all of it. Go go check out the articles for yourself. Go check out Fagan's work. Go check out Eco's work. They're both incredible with their coverage of these teams. But what we want to do is highlight our favorite parts from these articles. And so what Madison and I are going to both do here in the first segment is I, we've both picked, without telling the other, we've both picked our favorite like question and answer from these respective articles. And uh, I do, do you want to go first, Madison? Do you want to go with yours first and I'll follow you? It, it's up to you. I All mean, right, I can you go know, first. You, you go first. Give me, give, okay. me your, give me your piece, your, your question and answer combo that stood out the most to you of either of these two articles. Okay, so I actually have two, but I'm just going to do one, all right? And I'm going to go, because I have one for both um, Eco and Fagan, but I'll go with the Eco one uh, right now. And it's the question regarding, um, it says, Eco asks, speaking of adding players, you guys head into the summer armed with nearly $60 in cap space, but you... but, But do you see free agency as more of a chance to give this team a facelift? Or simply adding pieces around your young core? And this is like a huge question because of the James Harden Harden looming question. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Because of the timeline Rafael Stone uh, and Tillman Fertitta have, you know, kind of made very clear that we're we're changing in the direction. And a lot of Rockets fans want to know what exactly does that mean? Mm -hmm. And I thought we got some really great clues uh, about how they're going to approach uh, this off, uh, this offseason and veterans. 
And so Yudoka says, I would say more complimentary, honestly. I mean, you want to do both. You want to add veterans that aren't just a voice only. You want them to be out there, play and push the guys. But as I've said, regardless of free agency in the draft, we still have a group of guys we want to grow and we're looking for internal growth. More so, more so than necessarily looking for an outside guy to try and save the day, right? And so this is huge for me because Jalen Green has been talked about in the national media as a guy that could be shopped. Um, and, and our young co our young core, it's really been scary to hear our young core be talked about in this manner, um, maybe for a, a, a older star who may only give us a two or three championship, two, two or three year championship window. But this kind of puts things in perspective. They're not just, they're not trying to revamp the, the uh, entire um, lineup, right? They're not, and they're not just trying to take these home run hits. They still have our core young guys growth in mind and they want to build around them, but add guys that are vets that can come in and compete for time, push, push to compete. And I mean, that was just a breath of fresh air. It was it was a big relief. I thought the Rockets might be leaning this way, but it was really good to hear from Udoka's mouth itself. No, and I, I absolutely great, great pull, great, a great, great direction to go with with your favorite, I, I guess, answer from Udoka from this this mountain, this treasure trove. If you, you say breath of fresh air, it is a breath of fresh air. And, and th so let me go. Let me go to mine here. I'll, okay. So my mine's from Eco and. Reading this quote, I had this moment, man, where I was just like, I, I was like, my jaw kind of dropped and hit the ground when I was when I was reading this quote. So here's mine. The question was, does the collective age of the group impact the schematics you want to implement? This isn't a team like Boston that had real veterans with quality years under their belt up and down the roster. This is a team full of players between 19 and 22. Udoka's answer. Brace yourselves, Rockets fans. Not at all. I think that goes with what I'm saying. You've all been playing basketball for a long time now. You've all been taught the game. I want guys that can catch on quickly, but also adapt to what we're trying to do. I'm not going to hold anything back defensively or schematically because we're a young group. That'd be going against what I'm saying. I want guys to get up to speed quickly, have smart cerebral players that can do a lot of different things. The versatility is part of that, but I'm not going to dumb it down because we have a younger team. I'm expecting everybody to catch up to speed and to be able to use their strengths to our advantage. Bro. I would like to highlight here <laughs> that we had Steven Silas on, look, first off, Emo Doka is very clear, and we haven't even got like there's so much more to get to here, guys, about his plans for the defense and how to use Shingoon and KPJ. And it was like just music to my ears for stuff that we've been complaining about throughout an entire season, an 82 game schedule. But with this quote specifically, and why this one stood out to me, we had Steven Silas on numerous occasions tell us, I'm keeping the playbook vanilla. It's basic, it's simple, it has to be. We're a young team, we're still instilling the foundation, all of that. We had Steven Silas tell us that he doesn't run any plays for Jabari Smith Jr., the number three overall pick in the draft. And here you have Ime Odoka saying, no, I am not going to dumb down the playbook. I'm not going to simplify schemes. I'm not going to try and make things easy for these young guys. I have expectations, and those expectations need to be met. I think this quote, this mentality is monumental, Madison, for the approach. It is, again, the complete antithesis of Steven Silas, where in his mind, he was like, I have to keep things simple. I have to keep things basic. I can't do anything advanced until we've mastered the basic stuff. And Udoka's just like, nah, man, I'm throwing you in the deep end. You're going in the deep end, and you're going to learn how to play this. You're going to learn how you're going to learn these defensive schemes. You're going to learn the principles that I want to instill both offensively, defensively. And I don't think that this means like, you know, he's not going to be, he's going to be unfair about it or he's going to like, you know, bench guys left and right if they don't understand stuff. It's just, he has a bar. He has a level of expectations for what this group can accomplish. And he said it during his introductory press conference. Uh, youth is not an excuse, right? Incredible. Like that. And I think that is the exact proper mentality to have is youth can be an excuse but I feel like all too often with young teams, youth becomes the blanket excuse. It becomes the cop out excuse. Oh, they're a young team. They're, they're, they're... It's, an, it's a it's an enabler. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it enables right. And and so when we talk about accountability, 
the first the first step in that is setting real expectations mm -hmm. and that you're not and you're not going to coddle. We're not coddling anymore. We don't we don't do that anymore. You're you're in a, you're in the NBA with grown men doing a real job and it's time for you to step up and either you sink or you swim. Right. And but that puts an onus and a responsibility on the players that they have to meet that bar. Right. And it's a it's a different type of work ethic. And then once you bring in a, the influx of vets that we're talking about who can compete at certain positions, it it, it not only helps develop and helps guys uh, get better as well, but they have something to lose. You know what I mean? They're they're minutes. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I thought that was an excellent quote. It is. It's huge. I, I, I definitely agree 100 percent. Coming up, what does Ime Udoka envision for the Houston Rockets defense? How does he think he's going to utilize Alperin Shingun on the offensive and defensive side of the ball? What does he think KPJ's role on this team should be? We're going to get to all of that in just one moment. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Look, I wasn't a big shorts person until I got myself some Bird Dogs. Now I rock those things everywhere I go. You ask anybody in my personal life, friends, family, whatever, hey, do you ever see Jackson wearing shorts? Nope. I... I Oh, Jackson shorts? No, he would never wear shorts, right? I would basically wear jeans, slacks, sweats, like, you know, hip to ankle, long pants all the time. Because, you know, if I was going to the gym or whatever, basketball shorts, that's fine. But I always felt weird, you know, go to a restaurant or on a date or hanging out with friends. I never really had a pair of shorts that I thought were comfortable, stylish, fit well until Bird Dogs. You got to check them out. They will be the most comfortable, best fitting shorts you will ever own in your life. Don't believe me? Go check it out. And right now, with every purchase, when you go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA, with every purchase, when you enter como, promo code locked on NBA, they will throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler. It is such a nice little tumbler. I'm already drinking coffee out of it. It's incredible. So go check them out, birddogs.com. And continuing on here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Continuing to unpack this. Q&A session that both Jonathan Fagan and Kelly Eco had with new Rockets head coach Ime Udoka. And this next one, I think, stands out in a big way. There were a couple really fantastic responses that Udoka had about Alperin Shingun and his, I guess, you know, tentative plan for how he's going to approach using him this upcoming season in, in his system. And I think it helps highlight, A, the fact that everybody who was trying to ship Shingun out of Houston the moment Ime Odoka got hired is like, hey, like, what are we doing here? Uh, and then after you hear these answers, I think you'll be even more excited about the possibility of what Udoka envisions for Alper and Shingun here with the Rockets. Uh, so the question was, and I should preface that there were a couple responses before this question about defensive approach, philosophy, the running running two big lineups in Boston, that kind of thing, and, and how the Celtics achieved some of their defensive success. And so the question then starts off, can Alper and Shingun be, be that kind of defensive player at center? Again, alluding back to Rob Williams, Al Horford, kind of what they accomplished in Boston. And Udoka's answer, absolutely incredible. And also, it just yeah, I'll just read the answer. We'll get into That's it. <laughs> Yeah, I think anytime you're a cerebral player, you can figure things out. And so people have to understand, and it's my job as well to understand people's limitations. And so you don't put them in positions where they can't succeed. Uh, should I read that part back? No, no, I'll keep going. You're not going to have certain guys sitting back in a drop position when they're not great rim protectors and at a disadvantage. So you tweak things to adjust to your personnel and being a smart player, he should be able to pick up all these concepts easily. Who would have thought, Jackson? Who would have thought? Also, have thought? shout out to Ime Odoka taking absolute shots at whether Bro. whether intentional or not, taking he shots at Steven Silas. Because here's another one. Just like in segment <laughs> one, the fact that we have hard evidence. We got the receipts, Madison, of like Steven Silas's Bat philosophy being complete contrary to what's happening right now with Ime Odoka because Steven Silas is on record saying that he felt he couldn't play Alperin Shingun in any other type of defensive scheme except drop coverage. And here you have new head coach Ime Odoka saying, hey, you know what? Like, 
he's actually not good in drop, and so we probably shouldn't do it because it puts him at a disadvantage, right? Like, that makes sense, right? It makes sense to me, Madison. Does it make sense to you? I guess it does. It's supposed to make sense. But th I think this is what is so incredible about these two articles. They're, they're literally the antithesis of what Silas quotes from the media are. Like literal quotes, like the, the your your first point, uh, the, your first portion from the Eco article. Silas is on the record saying, "Hey, we can't really open up the playbook, right? We gotta." And you and you spoke about that. This guy is literally saying the opposite of these things, <laughs> and it's it's just amazing that you know. I mean, and who would have thought? Alperin Shingun's not a rim protector, and maybe we shouldn't use him in that way. He doesn't have the letter, the lateral quickness to <laughs> to guard and contain at the level, and and as well as get back to protect for the lob. He doesn't have the length. He doesn't have. But there's other things that he can do. He is not in. He's not ineffective at all, and he's a smart player. Use that intelligence, and that, that's the I important. Mean, that's the important part yeah. of that. Uh, the other important part of this question, not to just make it about dunking on. Silas here, which again, it, it is in large part doing that, but it's also just Alpi is a smart defender, right? And Udoka re recognizes, or sorry, he's a smart player, and Udoka recognizes that cerebral players, guys who process the game quickly, we've talked about this a lot. We have highlighted before, Alpi does have, he's got good hands. He reads things quickly. He anticipates really well. All these th all these things that maybe don't necessarily jump off the page the way that like physical attributes do if you're, you know, bigger or longer or taller, quicker, faster than other guys. Some of these things can help make up for some of his physical limitations. And it's about having a coach who will put you in the right position to succeed with a defensive scheme that masks some of those weaknesses or on the, the other side of that actually accentuates some of his strengths defensively, right? Maybe again, playing him off ball a little bit so that he can maybe roam a little bit, not necessarily have to be involved in so many of those pick and roll actions, right? Trying to hide him away on the wing so that he can come over and blow plays up using his anticipation, things like that. Just getting creative with how you deploy him defensively. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's very clear to me that Udoka watched film on this Rockets team. I think Udoka watched Locked on Rockets. I think he was just <laughs> like, I think he was doing research all season, all season. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to try and figure out which team I want to go coach by the end of the season. And he's tuning in to LOR and he listened to all 82 games of me complaining incessantly about what was going on with Steven Silas. And he was just taking notes and he was like, all right, here we go. Q and A session. I'm gonna I'm gonna say all the right things and have Rockets fans singing my praises all on social media. Bro, I honestly think he watched these Rockets games and was shocked at what he saw. I he was we, like, these we guys were shocked are at talented. what we saw. Right. We were all shocked. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he, he got. To, he was like, "Oh no, the talent is there. There, these people, these players are being misused." L let me just. So no, you know, uh, you know, you know what happened. U U Udoka saw the first game. He opened the first game. He saw the first clip of Shingun playing drop coverage, and he said, "Oh my!" There you go. Against, That's <laughs> against Damian Lillard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> over and over and over again. Over and over. And All right, over. Uh, let, well, you, you've got a, you've got <laughs> yeah. another quote for so, us. What you got so, for us? So yes, and this one is from the Eco article. And it's uh, Udoka on the offense and what he saw from the offense last year. A lot of your your turn, my turn in the offense, right? We want to be a little more of a collective unit, all right? And I skip ahead. You guys are uh, – the young guys are ambitious and playing for certain things. Skip ahead. A lot of, a lot of them have, have had individual success. We want to – um, I'm sorry, cultivate that into team success – with me, this is the important part. That's the job of the coach. That's the job of the coach. I remember in the middle of the season, the first time we played the Milwaukee Bucks, and we got blown out, and Steven Silas got up there on the press conference and said, I told the guys if they played ISO ball like that, they weren't going to win. Are you the coach? Do they respect you? <laughs> like, oh, do they follow your game plans, right? This is the job of the coach. The job of the coach is to get buy-in, to get cooperation. And the lack of ball movement throughout the, the course of the season, the lack of defensive effort within the middle of the season, there was a clear lack of buy-in from the players. 
And that comes with the lack of accountability. And uh, this all comes into a lot of these guys, these guys at this level already know ball, right? And so this is the coach's job. He has to be able to grab these young players and get them to play a certain way. That's the job of the coach. And I think that was something that was probably the single greatest thing Silas failed at this year. Hear, hearing Udoka just sum up the Rockets offense by saying a lot of your turn, my turn, when that's just, when, when we just, all season long, and we're like, man, what we're watching the, the little fake three-man weave on the perimeter, and it's, you know, now it's Jalen's turn to cook. Now it's Kevin's turn to cook. Now it's <laughs> Dacian's turn to cook. Like, and you've got Udoka, and he comes in, and he's like, yeah, that's basically what it was. Like, that's just... That's all I they did, boo. But we got to get them to pass the ball. That's you. Really, got to get them to pass got, the ball. Got to get them to pass the ball. Got to get them to Got to get them to be seems, unselfish. And, and just I, seems, I'm just like, he's like, yeah, and that's my job. And I was like, whoa, I, I wonder whose job it was last year <laughs> <laughs> to get guys to pass the ball. Jesus. Oh, uh, yeah. It, I mean, that's kind, that's kind of where we're at. And that's, that's why this is such a breath of fresh air to hear these answers to so many of the complaints that we've had for, again, the better part of an entire, you know, 82 game slate and hearing this guy identify it in a quick little set of interviews. And you're like, oh my God, he gets it. He understands. And we haven't even gotten to one of the best parts yet. I, I'm surprised neither one of us made this next quote quote our you know our go-to quote in the first segment we kind of buried the lead on this one some terrible journalistic integrity on my behalf but coming up we're going to get into uh the vision for the offense and how he thinks he can utilize Alperin Shingun and Kevin Porter Jr. We're going to get there in just one moment. And final segment here at Locked on Rockets your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Now we wound up unintentionally saving I think maybe the best for last. I, I really, I probably could have led with this quote. It probably maybe should have made its way into the first segment, but here we are. This is how the show went. So, Madison, this next one, like, I need, if, if you are listening to this and you are listening to this podcast or watching on YouTube and not, like, sitting down, I need you to sit down. Like, I need you to, like, m like mentally prepare for this quote that is going to knock you down with how amazing it is to hear because it's like, oh my God, Udoka gets it. So it's from the Fagan article. The question is offensively, Shingun has unusual abilities. How do you best use that talent, especially when you also have dynamic scoring guards? And here's the answer. It adds to the versatility you can have offensively. Anytime you have a big that can initiate offense, whether it's from the high post or off the block, you want to take advantage of his skill set. The Jokic comments are there for a reason, because he does some of the passing and has the vision and can score from different areas on the court. He's deadly in the pocket, you can hit him on the half roll, and he can make all the plays there. That just makes it easier for everyone else. And, but wait, there's more. A guy like Kevin Porter, who shot in the high 40s on spot-up threes, only took two a game. You want to use that, move him around, and have other guys initiate offense to get him those shots. Alperin has a unique skill set that we want to take advantage of. Hallelujah. Wow. It's that beautiful. Sounds like, that sounds like Shin Hub to me. <laughs> It's, it's, I, I, we, we went through a whole season just begging, just begging to see it for just a little bit. And we didn't even get like, we got like 10 games and it wasn't even like a real version of it. Right. It was just kind of like, all right, let's just, you know, now it's just Al P gets, gets a few more touches a game. This is, let, let's unpack this. Let's go, let's go line by line here. And first he talks about Al P's ability to initiate the offense, Right. The fact that he has a guy who can, you know, a big that can create. That's 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 amazing. That's good. The next part, he gets into the Jokic comparisons, right? And he, this is my kicker, Madison, because for, it feels like for almost every Udoka answer that we've highlighted so far, we've had a Steven Silas receipt to pull. <laughs> I remember being in Denver, in Denver, the Mile High City, when... Nikola Jokic dropped the comments saying, I think the Rockets should play more through Alper and Shingun. And I asked Steven about Jokic's comments. And what did he do? Do you remember what he did? Or do I need to refresh your memory too? Did, 
refresh it because I, I have an idea. He laughed ahead. the comment off. Right. He shrugged it off and laughed it away and said, ha, 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 of course he probably wants us to play more through him. He probably sees some of himself in him. And then that was the answer that I got. I didn't get like a breakdown of like, yeah, because they have this skill set and they can do this. And like, this is the same. And like, we can lean into this ability. No, I got a shrug and a laugh from Steven Silas when asked about the comparison that Jokic made himself to Alper and Shingun. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> and then there's the, the, the cherry on top is identifying a KPJ is your best shooter. And you don't even have your best shooter taking the majority of your spot up threes. He's taking less than two a game. And on top of that saying, have other guys initiate offense. Madison to me, that doesn't necessarily sound like KPJ is going to be the, he might do, he might have some playmaking duties and some responsibilities to run the offense, but it does not sound like to me, he will be the primary creator for this Rockets team, assuming he is still on the team at the start of next season. Yeah, I mean, it's clear, and not just in this quote, but throughout the article that everybody should read both of these articles, that Udoka's philosophy on offense is multiple initiators, creating advantages and sharing the ball to make everybody better on the floor, right? And what he's talking about with Alper and Shingun is – this is another player with a, a with a particular skill set and versatility to initiate offense. And we should lean into that ability to init initiate offense. If you compare that to last year, one of the biggest issues with the Rockets team was their ability to uh, – to, they didn't have a true point guard and they struggled with sharing the ball. And why it hurt a lot of us Rockets fans is because there was a clear pathway to mitigate some of those weaknesses with our guards – with Alper and Shingun's special set of skills. And it was like, it was like our coach was blind and he couldn't see it. Right. And he wouldn't try it. And he refused to adapt to the strengths of his players. That is not who M.A. Yudoka is. That is, that is what M.A. Yudoka is going to do. He's going to adapt to the strengths of our players He's going to lean into those. And he talks about that in uh, the Fagan art article in particular about leaning into the things that we do, we do best and um, growing the guys in the, in the things that they aren't as good as good at. So I, I'm ecstatic for him. It seems like we're going to have a competent team next year. <laughs> you know, and, and here's the, you know, maybe I'll leave you. I'll leave you with this final thought is I know for the off season, right? Missing out on Wimby stings. You know, there's maybe a slim glimmer of hope that something happens with the draft and maybe Scoot Henderson drops to four or there can be a, a trade up opportunity or something to that, to that, you know, to that degree. But the most important move this off season past the draft, past free agency, past any trades, anything else that happens with restructuring the roster, the most important addition was always going to be who the next head coach was going to be because the next head coach was going to be the guy that is going to be the culture setter, the trend setter, establish a baseline for accountability and the direction of the franchise and, and all of that. And the Rockets absolutely knocked it out of the park, right? They got in, in my eyes and, and many others, I think yours as well, probably a, a top five coach in the NBA. And to have that, to help steer the Rockets through this next phase, this phase two, whatever it is, I think we're going to be absolutely shocked at how much better and more cohesive this team looks just starting next season, regardless of any other additions that are made, regardless of if they make the pick at number four, trade it, whatever, regardless of, if, of who they sign in free agency, they are going to look like so much of a more competent and cohesive basketball team. They're not going to look like an AAU team. They're just not. Right, they're gonna look like a team that actually has some purpose, has an identity. Um, we didn't get too much further into some of the defensive comments that he had, just more some of the the broad stroke defense stuff. But very clearly, he's a guy who prides himself on the defensive approach, and he highlighted things like the ability for Jabari and Tari and the flashes that they, they've already shown. But he also highlighted the fact that, like, hey. Everybody on this roster should and can play defense because they all have the physical gifts and attributes to play defense. They just 
weren't doing it basically. And they weren't, they, you know, there were, there were some, you know, miscommunications, you know, lack of understanding assignments, lack of, you know, rotations, not being on time with stuff, you know, basically the technical aspects of defense that I think he is absolutely going to clean up because he is going to demand a level of excellence that I don't think was being set. A bar was not being set under Steven Silas. And that is, is the, the first thing that's going to change with this Rockets team uh, this off season going into next year, Madison, any final thoughts? On this one. Yeah, I mean, just to wrap up what you were saying, he in that article, it's clear that he wants to challenge these players, that he wants them to take accountability on defense, to, to take pride in their one-on-one matchups, doing their assignments, and patching up the areas where they where they aren't as strong as team defense, right? And so I just want to echo echo those same sentiments because that is a big part of the piece. Emma Yudoka is a clearly a defensive coach defensive minded coach and so i can't wait to i i i literally can't wait to next year we ain't even got that we haven't even got our draft pick we haven't i know man right? the, 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 the free agency haven't even started yet we've, we've got a month and a half of draft coverage coming your way and also i buried the lead not once but twice um because we were so excited to get to this email doka stuff the rockets made their first hire i'm tucking it away at the end of the episode yeah. Because I, I got I got to squeeze it in here somehow. Gotcha. Um, the Rockets made their first assistant coaching hire. They are bringing on uh, Texas Longhorn legend Royal Ivy. Hook them uh, to Emi Udoka's staff. Uh, Ivy and Udoka spent time together in Brooklyn. They were both assistant coaches there uh, with the Nets. And so, yeah. So, Ivy's, Ivy's joining the staff. He's the first assistant coach hired. And one other note that I wanted to make is the two other names that were recently reported as being, as, you know, possible names to look out for. And I mentioned them here very early on after hiring Emi Odoka is two names to keep an eye on Ben Sullivan and Aaron miles, who were both, uh, Ime hires when he was in Boston, they were Ime Udoka guys that he brought on board his assistants, basically, who obviously they weren't going to like quit in solidarity with Ime when he was let go or suspended technically. Um, and it is worth noting, so both of those guys very clearly still going through their playoff run right now with the Celtics. I would be shocked if if the Rockets didn't get either of them. I fully expect one, if not both of them, to probably come to the Rockets to, to join Ime, unless maybe the Celtics win the title, then maybe they're willing to like stay there and just run it back and, and be content there. Uh, but it's also worth noting that Ben Sullivan is a shooting coach who helped rehabilitate and fix Derek White's three-point shot. He was shooting 31% from three when he got traded to the Boston Celtics last season. And then this year, he's up to 38.5% from three. So Ben Sullivan worked religiously with Derek White, got his three-point shot fixed. And so if the Rockets do walk away with an Eamon Thompson from this year's NBA draft... Uh, a guy who very clearly needs some work done on his outside shooting stroke, uh, Ben Sullivan would be a great addition to this Rockets coaching staff. On that note, after burying the lead not once but twice in one episode, Madison, let everybody know where they can track you down at. Yeah, come interact with me at, at Madman Leaks on Twitter. Love to talk Rockets basketball, and we love to talk draft. Let's get into the four pick. That's going to do it for another edition of Locked on Rockets. As always, thank you so much for checking out the show. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing wherever you listen to your podcast. That's Apple, Spotify, Google, the Odyssey app. Free and available on all podcast platforms. We're also available on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, search Locked on Rockets. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball.